Hey, what's going on? Welcome to this live stream. We're going to be using ChatGPT in the right way, or at least what I'm calling the right way. And it'll be kind of focused at people that own blogs of some kind. You're a webmaster. Maybe you have a niche site. Let me know in the chat if you could hear me. I think we should have a good crew here today. And I can hear myself, so that's always a good sign here. All right, we have uh, some questions already in the chat here, which is great. And we're going to go over, like I said, a couple things, again, focused at bloggers. So I think, at least in my little circle, especially the audience here on YouTube, I found initially all the AI tools, Jasper, ChatGPT, others, right? There's many others people were really focused on using the tools to have content written for as cheaply as possible, as fast as possible. Maybe they're using AI as a bit of an assistant, but largely the AI tools were writing the content. And while there might be some short-term gains that you can see, maybe some benefits, it's probably short term, you know, Google is probably not going to uh, want to rank that AI content. And the thing is, if everyone has access to the same tools, very cheap content, who cares about the quality, even if it's great quality, if everybody has the same access to the same tools, and the internet can be flooded with all this content, there has to be another differentiator. So overall, it doesn't look like it's a long-term situation where you could benefit from it. You can still use it, whatever. Today, we're going to focus on using AI, ChatGPT specifically, as a virtual assistant that's kind of an expert. And there are a few people in the chat, and I'm going to say hello. We're going to do some housekeeping uh, stuff, a couple admin things I need to mention. So number one, we have uh, DZOP, the Piano Gamer. So there's a question here, and basically, ChatGPT used my last name in a video, right, or in a you know, a chat. I published a video last week because it used my name and the person's last name who was joining me, Matt Javanese. Both of us have kind of unusual last names, but Chad GPT used our names. We're on the internet, right? So Chad GPT knows who we are, right? If we, if we ask, like they would be able, there, there should be some information about us. Matt and I have collaborated in the past and the thing is, ChatGPT used our last names without me telling ChatGPT who it was. And when I asked further, it just said it was random. The thing is, I, I know why, right? I was creating a video to show exactly like what I was going through. I texted Matt and I was like, hey, <laughs> it knew our names. But the thing is, Matt and I are on the internet. We have been for like, you know, I've been on online for like 10 years. He's been on for a little bit longer, I think. So it's not a stretch that ChatGPT could place us in a list of people that talk about affiliate marketing and SEO. Not that weird. We've been on a bunch of podcasts. We've had our own podcast, blah, blah, blah. So nothing too weird. The weird part is ChatGPT said it was totally random. It wasn't random it used our names because it kind of figured out who we were. So anyway, D's up. That is what happened. We have Helen on here. Daniel's on. What's up, Fred? Jay Paul is on here. And basically, you know, Fred says, I knew it. So like I said, I, I knew why ChatGPT figured it out, but it, it said it was random. It pretended like it was arbitrary. It was not it just somehow in some content on the internet figured out who we were. So people can check out the video, go check out the, my, my uh, channel page and you'll see one of the recent videos. It's like ChatGPT figured out my name. It's about four minutes long, five minutes long. 
and I just show you exactly what happens. So, like I said, today we're going to go over some really cool stuff. I'm going to show you a couple resources. So, really quick here. I have a link in the description. This is too much. I don't want to show you all of those windows. I want to show you, I think, this window. Yeah. All right. So I have free resources out here. ChatGPT, OpenAI, and Jasper, free resources. Here's the thing. So it's basically a course in here. Think of it really as organized notes that I use. So these are my own personal notes and it'll kind of walk you through. I'm learning more and more. I want to show you two specific things, two new things. So one, I put together a prompt engineering cheat sheet. I realized <laughs> that the course stuff was just, it's, it's a lot. So if you hop in here, you're like, ah, oh, shit, there's all these lessons, but really, you know, it's just, like one page or after one page or so, it's pretty quick. But here's the deal, I wanted to create a cheat sheet. So I put together the best stuff that I have. One of which, I'm just gonna skip to the end. So there's some productivity stuff here, right? There's writing and content creation. So it could be writing content. It could be coming up with outlines for a YouTube video. One awesome thing is you could teach ChatGPT your style. So you could put together some sample writing, maybe you've written a couple posts before, maybe you're in school, right? You've written a couple papers. You can insert your own writing and tell ChatGPT to understand the tone, the style, and use that for future responses. So you create a chatbot that should be in your own tone. So that's pretty amazing. There's other stuff in here too. Follow-up prompts are super cool. You can get kind of close, right? It's a chat, there's back and forth, but sometimes it's not exactly what you want. So you need to ask follow-up questions. So there's just a couple of them here. I didn't want this to be too long. Once you do that refining with follow-up questions, you may get a, a response after, let's say 20 back and forth uh, chats. You could tell ChatGPT to create a prompt based on what you just created. So it took you 20 back and forth, like I said, you end up with something perfect, but then you can tell ChatGPT, consolidate all that, give me a prompt so I can just put that in and get the same thing every time. I give you an example like a YouTube video. So maybe there's five or six exchanges, YouTube video title, and then we end up with just a very concise prompt that we can use. Finally, right, you can create your own prompts using ChatGPT. So I give you a little sample here and I picked this up from one of the many open source resource pages for ChatGPT. And basically you can create a prompt generator and it's pretty ridiculous. So I give you a sample in this cheat sheet, which is freely available, but the one I wanna show you really quick is right here. So amazing prompts for niche sites. So you can create a niche site owner prompt, all right? So I used the prompt in the cheat sheet and I said, I have a niche site, I'm a niche site owner, it's a blog, I write about cameras. So here is a prompt, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing out, but it's four paragraphs. It says you're an AI content specialist for a blogger with a niche site about cameras. Provide guidance and support on the content, blah, blah, blah. So you can go on and on. And then I improved this because I thought, hey, what if I wanna give specific information about like a new camera. Maybe I want to give specific information about my own opinion on something. And then it's a little bit longer here, but now there's a paragraph in the prompt that says, if I have specific recommendations on the content, I will tell you about it. So you can interject your own ideas. Or again, if there's like new content out there, new camera, new specs, 
you need to tell ChatGPT because it doesn't know it yet. So you can head over, there's a link in the description, the prompt engineering cheat sheet, and you just head over to nichesiteproject.com slash AI resources. Again, there's a link in the description. So check that out over there. And then we're going to start hopping into some cool things that you can do. But that's kind of the idea. I wanted to really front load this. And I know a lot of people are going to hop on in a second. I hope people that are watching the replay, thank you for watching the replay. There's a lot more people to watch the replay. Go get the cheat sheet out there. There's so much, it's so dense with information. And a lot of the stuff that I put into the cheat sheet, those are the things that I realized after, you know, two or three weeks after ChatGPT came out, I was like, wait a second, you could do this and you could do that. And it's not writing content. It's not necessarily writing content. It's doing other stuff. That's what we're going to go over today. Quick thanks to Otis Global. I'm going to roll an ad from them in a few minutes here. Let my voice rest for a second. And they have premium age domains out there. They also have a sale going on for another uh, just about a week here, I think. I'm not 100% sure what time it ends. But 40% off selected domains. You can use the uh, coupon code, which is listed. There's a big banner if you join using my affiliate link, you can get $100 in your account. So you should definitely check it out if you're in the market for age domains. And there's a ton of them. There's a great filtering mechanism. So you could find whatever your niche is and probably go from there. All right. So let's start, let's start with uh, some of the things you can do with ChatGPT. I'm going to share my screen again. Just a second here. So one one cool thing, and we'll, we're just going to get right into like the nuts and bolts of it too. So we have we have a chat here. Okay, and I typed some of these in earlier so we can get the responses faster. So one thing that people often work on and need some tips on are about pages. So the about page, sometimes people struggle with what they should put in there, what they should include, what they shouldn't. And here's one of those areas where, again, you don't have to get ChatGPT to write you content. It can be a very helpful virtual assistant. So I just started very basic and said, what's on a good about page for a blog or niche site? And they talk about having a purpose. They talk about having a mission in the background of the website. It should answer the question, why does this website exist? And what value does it offer to the audience? And then they provide eight elements. I'll call ChatGPT they in this case, but maybe I should say it. I don't know. So we should have an intro, a mission statement, the niche description, credentials or experience, unique selling proposition. So what is it, what, what sets your site across or apart from others? We have uh, the audience, the personal story, and the call to action. If you want them to do something, like subscribe to your newsletter or follow on social media. It should be cl clear and concise and easy to read. So even without like doing anything else, you have a pretty good set of elements that you can start from. But you may not know exactly what to write. So I said, can you write a template for the about page, including the elements above? So now instead of having kind of an outline, just a bullet list, now we have a template. And if you are thinking about this in a like a broader sense, you can now f kind of forget about the about page. Now you realize that you can get a template for any kind of content. And the next example that I'm going to show you is a way to find the best practices out there and then create a template on that. So I'll show you in a second, but basically we have those eight elements 
for the about page and we have the intro, the mission statement, the description, credentials, unique selling proposition, and it literally gives you a Mad Lib style fill in the blank. Hello, my name is, and then insert your name. I'm the founder of put in the website name. I started it because, and it's a little bit bland, right? It provides literally the shortest sentence, the shortest section that you possibly can provide in here. It's very concise, but it doesn't have a lot of personality, but it has exactly what you need. So if you do have like a particular style, like I mentioned before, you could even tell ChatGPT, here's a sample of my writing. Can you please put it, put the template in the tone of my writing? And then you have this sort of generic template now in your own words, or at least closer to your own style. And in fact, I realized it was kind of bland. So I said, can you add more personal elements within the sections? So then it beefs it up and helps you put in your own story. So now it's not in sentence format, it's more like bullet points here, but that's pretty good. Again, it gives you a really strong starting point. So instead of having maybe the first time you tried it, you have an about page with, I don't know, two or three sections or a couple paragraphs or something. Now you have eight different sections, each with a couple of points. So you could have, you know, a couple pages worth of about page here, which can provide a lot more context for someone. And it'll just, it'll be much better if you're trying to network or reach out to people. They'll have a lot more information here. And Vince is on. Vince says, it's been brilliant for my sites, planning content and doing pretty much anything that isn't writing copy, but you could do that too. And Vince, I know I have an email from you. I am, I would say shoulder deep in emails right now. For some, I'm not sure if I got added to a lot more list, but I'm just like getting, <laughs> I'm getting more emails now than I have in a very long time. Okay, so I mentioned that you couldn't, could have this put in your own style, but let's keep iterating on this and say, can you provide the template? I'll say the updated template. And I'll just say in the style, we'll say like Ferris Bueller. Bueller is how you spell it. So, and the thing is, it's a kind of a dumb example. Okay, there was an error generating this response. So maybe need to refresh this one. Okay, so needed to refresh there. I am using GPT plus and now we have you know the the voice of Ferris Bueller, so we'll let this type out. And the idea generally is you know, you could put in your own content again, train GPT on your own style of writing, and then it would be in your voice. But if you wanted if you wanted to use a theme of someone else or you really like the way someone writes that is an author that is probably known by chat GPT, then you could write it in that voice, Malcolm Gladwell, whatever. All right. So that's typing along. And that's pretty amazing. Now, another thing that you can do. So now we have, by the way, it's, it's kind of filling it all out in the form of Ferris Bueller, not just the voice, but it's writing the whole thing. So let's say you have some product reviews you need to get into. So I'm going to I'm going to scroll up here. And I had to go a little do a little back and forth, but let's say that I don't know exactly what to include in a product review template. Now if you're on this, you should know <laughs> because you can sign up for my email list and then I send you my templates, including like a product review template and what to include. But let's say you don't know, or let's say you have like the general idea for a 
like what needs to be included in a product review, but you ran across a website and you thought, wow, that they do a really good job with a, a product review. Why don't I use that kind of template? So you can reverse engineer content. So I arbitrarily Googled best electric toothbrushes and now Forbes, I thought they did finance stuff, but now Forbes, they do product reviews for oral health. Okay, so I wanted to put in the full product review. I'm gonna click over here. So I wanted to put in the full product review, but you can see it's long. It's long and you really can only input, I don't know, maybe like 2,500, 3,000 words at one time for chat GPT and GPT-3. And generally that's kind of the cutoff. So you can input all of the content, but you have to do it in sections. So I said, I'm a blogger. I need help with content types. Here's a product review. It's long, so here's part one. And I literally, I copied and pasted this thing and divided it into three different sections. So I put in the first part. ChatGPT was going to tell me about like what I input there, but I didn't want that. So I clicked stop, gave it part two. And then I gave it part three right here. So now it has parts one through three, the full review for electric toothbrushes. So now I said, I gave, I gave you parts one, two, and three for a product review. Can you write an outline about what should be included for product reviews? My blog is not about electric toothbrushes, so it needs to be generic. My website is about cameras. So ChatGPT understood. It said, here's a general outline for a product review on a camera. And they gave us 10 elements here. Essentially what was in parts one through three. So I said, provide an outline. So we had the list here, but now I'm like, I want the outline. I want to know what the outline should be when several cameras are compared. So this is like a best of type post, not one product review, but a review with many reviews of many products, a best of a camera type. And I said, it should be similar to the electric toothbrush review, that example that I gave you for parts one, two, and three. ChatGPT says, yeah, sure, no problem. Here's an outline of a camera comparison broken into three parts. So we have the intro. So we have the introduction of the review, best cameras of 2023 or top mirrorless cameras. Explain the purpose of the review and the criteria used to select the cameras preview the cameras that will be included in the review. So then we have part two, comparison of the cameras. Start by introducing the top performing cameras and why they were selected. Discuss the features and capabilities of each one. They even gave us examples of features. That's like the sensor size, autofocus system, image stabilization, ISO range, and video capabilities. Overview of performance comparison of each camera's strengths and weaknesses. Part three is other cameras considered. Now, part four is like the buying guide, how to choose the best camera. And you discuss factors to consider, like the budget, intended use, you know, the lens uh, compatibility, user interface, and then tips on how to evaluate and test cameras before buying. And finally, you have a conclusion. So you see here, I didn't even give it any information about cameras. I gave ChatGPT a review from Forbes, which they should know anything about fucking toothbrushes, right? <laughs> they should know anything about toothbrushes, but I grabbed a review from Forbes, put it into ChatGPT, and I said, hey, this is a pretty good review. My, my site is not about toothbrushes. It's about something else. Can you write a template for product reviews 
and let me let me know the template. And then I said, oh, what, what about content types for uh, like a best of camera? I wanna do this over and over again. There might be a lot of cameras reviewed in one post. What is an outline for that? So now we have a template. And for the people that are thinking, again, you're zooming out, you're thinking on a, a broader scale, this is something that maybe I would spend a couple hours on. I would go look at a product review somewhere. I would look at another product review. I would look at another one. Reading it, I'm writing the sections down. I'm like, okay, they talked about a buying guide. They talked about the pros and cons. They talked about the ways to you know, just determine what is important to you for your camera based on the usage, maybe compatibility with other products you already have, all these other details. I would spend a couple hours researching and then probably a couple hours creating the template. This took like eight minutes, something like that. I just asked a couple of questions and I have this awesome template that I can use myself or I can provide it to a writer. It's a huge game changer. And the thing is like, you don't have, I, I knew some of the answers to the questions that I was asking, but you could be brand new in an area and just like understand how to ask questions, understand like output that you're getting. And the more you use these chat tools, the better you're gonna get. If, uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you probably remember, uh, I think just about two months ago, I was like, I haven't tried out ChatGPT yet. I don't really care. I think it might be okay, but I'll wait around. And then finally, you know, enough people told me. It's pretty good. You should check it out, Doug. So I waited like a week or two after that. I've only been using ChatGPT for um, uh, maybe around the first of the year. So I had an epiphany and it hit me what you can do with some of these tools. And as Vince said, it's not really writing the copy, right? Like I don't really care about that portion of it. You can use it to do stuff like that. You can get it to write your whole post. But I mean, best case scenario, you're going to end up with like derivative content based on whatever the the data set was. It could still be decent. It could still be helpful, but it's probably not going to be better than the original information. The only way that it might be better is if you augmented whatever you, whatever the output was. If you put more in there, if you put in your own ideas, as I mentioned with the cheat sheet and this stuff over here, this niche site prompt, like this, this prompt right here could basically be, let me zoom out, this prompt right here, which is free, freely available to you. You just have to go sign up for access to this free course. This would be your right-hand person to be a VA that's an expert in your field. There's a good chance, even if you're like into the niche, there's a good chance ChatGPT is just going to know more than you. And then the cheat sheet here gives you just as much, if not, well, it's more information. But if you're really just con concerned with like being a webmaster, this is the prompt that you need. It's revised here with, you know, the ability to put in more information, like if you want to if you want to put in something extra, right? If you want to put in your specific opinion on, I don't know, maybe there's like a news story that came out. You have an opinion. Chat GPT doesn't know shit about it because it was uh, based on, you know, the data set that Chat GPT used is an older data set. It stops at the end of 2021 and maybe it's a news story and you need to give it some information. No problem. You can do that. All right. So I'm going to let my voice rest here for a second. We have a quick ad to roll from Otis Global. I promise I'll be right back. People ask some questions out there and I have some other really cool stuff to show you. Video is brought to you by Otis Global, the source for premium age domains, domains that mean business. And the feature domain for today is 
this uh, rolls off the tongue here is IYWTO.com. And uh, it's really hard for me to read out loud. So that was actually truly a struggle. But it stands for if you want to, if you want to. That actually rolls off the tongue much better. And it was once the bustling hub of a dynamic echo movement. And this domain champions sustainable living and launched groundbreaking initiatives to safeguard our precious environment. It's been around for a little while here, created in 2015, so it's eight years old, has a domain rating of 19 and a domain authority of 31. We'll take a look at some of those links in a second. Before we get into some of the other details and look at the Wayback Machine, I need to tell you that there's a clearance sale over at Otis. So check out the marketplace. There is a 40% off on selected domains, including IYWTO.com. <laughs> so be sure to check it out and you got to use a coupon code at sale. So it's clearly noted here and there are 225 of them on clearance. Again, 40% off. So let's take a look at the Wayback Machine here really quickly. And you could just see that it was kind of a, a location-based not necessarily location, but it helps you find green services near you. So kind of location-based. Kind of cool because it is a directory type site. I actually have an interview coming out pretty soon on directory sites. And the thing is, you could, especially if you were into the movement, you could find companies that provide green services, things where, let's say it's a cleaning company, right? So there's tons of cleaning companies. Maybe they work with uh, like Airbnbs or something like that, or maybe they just work with, you know, individual people where they go clean their house. But the thing is, some people care about the chemicals that are used in their home, and maybe they just want to use organic cleaning products like I don't know, like vinegar and water and, you know, a little elbow grease or something like that. So you could put together a directory and show people what is available to them locally, which is pretty cool because it might be a little hard to find that in uh, certain areas, especially, right? So some areas, maybe it's easier to find those companies and they advertise it specifically, but you may be able to put it together further. So that's a little, a little bit of a, uh, I guess like referral and affiliate type marketing, but you could also put together eBooks and you could put it together webinars and courses related to sustainability and environmentalism. So let's take a quick look here and we can see that there are 94 referring domain and 62 do follow. So let's take a quick look at those. Hopefully that'll pop up properly here. And we see some things that I don't know how to say exactly. So video, uh, English video .net, I don't know that site, but let's, um, these are do follow. Let's sort these by the domain rating. Let me get the big ones up top. So we have the guardian, we have meetup, we have Ted, MDPI, we have UCLAC UK, bitcointalk.org, lifegate dot it teresa.org and so on and many many others and all of these you know all the ones i just mentioned those are over 60 domain ratings so pretty big hitter here and if you want to check out some of the details be sure to go over to otis global again a lot of things on sale for the month of february in 2023 so be sure to check it out and if you join using my affiliate link you can get a hundred dollars in your account and if you make a purchase i might get a commission so thanks a lot to otis all right we are back and I can't even remember if I put a link in the description, but I do take these uh, nootropics here. It's called um, Thesis. And I've been taking it for many years, like five. One of my students told me about it. And the reason why I like Thesis is there's different kinds. So a lot of the nootropics out there, it's just like one size fits all. It has some shit in there. It does okay, but it's kind of a compromise. And these have different formulas. And you can take different ones depending on what you're trying to do. So I often take the creativity one if I'm doing uh, you know, creative work. And I'm doing some other stuff after I finish up the call today. So I'll just throw these down. It takes a little, it takes like 30 minutes to kick in, I think. 
20 minutes, 30. And I'm going to show you a couple awesome things. I always lose some people in the ads. So I'm trying to show them earlier <laughs> in the stream. So if you missed the first part, be sure to rewind it. Watch the first part. What I'm going to show you now is something that you can get access to. It is free. The stuff that I'm showing you is free. I have a new cheat sheet that I'm, I'm rolling out. And there's a few people on the page right now. The reason why I made it a Google Sheet is so that I could change it and update it. And then you can just get to it. Maybe I should make it a PDF, but I'm treating this like a living document. And there's some really cool shit in here, some productivity, some writing stuff. Reverse engineering is really cool. And the thing I'm going to show you is creating your own prompts. So I created a prompt for a niche site owner. This is it. It's like five paragraphs long. This one is based on someone with, you know, a camera. And the thing is you could copy and paste it and basically like fill in whatever your niche is and that'll be good to go. Does anyone have a niche that they want to use? There's like a 30 second delay. So I'll give everyone just a second or two here. But the thing is you can just kind of change it up to whatever you want it to be. So this uh, chat here was about a product review template. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste in the prompt for a niche site owner. Again, it's like a few paragraphs. It's about cameras, so it fits in with what we have here. So I'm telling ChatGPT, I want you to be an AI content specialist for a niche site about cameras. So it's trying to tell me some different content types. Which is, you know, funny enough, that's what I was going to ask it, but I didn't even prompt it in this case. So it's telling us different content types that might be helpful. One is product reviews, so camera reviews. Another one is tutorials. And now it's telling us about comparisons and news and trends. So very powerful to come up with ideas. So... It's giving us five, so interviews as well. And then they are talking about to adapt the sample product review outline and template for the needs of a camera. The blogger can follow some more structure, but focus on camera models, lenses, or accessories. And you could talk about aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. So here we're kind of getting into the specifics. As I mentioned, you can transfer this over to any niche that you have. Even if, even if you're an expert and you know things about the topic area, it can still represent a huge time saver. So I know a little bit about cameras. There's like some gear set up behind me. <laughs> I'm using a camera right there. There's another one. There's like six lenses over there. There's actually more than that. So I know a couple things about cameras, but let's say I want to save some time. Let's say... I want to get an outline about ISO on digital cameras, specifically mirrorless. So I'll just say, and I'm just making this up on the fly. Give me a, a detailed outline about ISO on digital cameras. And I'll say, be sure to include details about how it compares to film uh, cameras. Okay, so how it compares to film cameras. And let's see what we come up with. So the thing is, like I said, even if I already know about the topic area. Even if I'm an expert, there's a good chance ChatGPT will get close enough. We'll, we'll call it like 80 to 95% correct. And then I could add in more details, but this saves me time from making decisions. Number one, it represents a way that I could come in to edit things and tweak ideas 
versus pure idea generation. Maybe it is critical for me to do some pr pure idea generation, but if it's something kind of straightforward, maybe I don't need to burn that much time on it. So here we have a five part outline. What is ISO and digital cameras? How does it compare to film? So specifically, that's the thing that I wanted to include. It talks about film grain. It talks about digital noise, advantages and disadvantages. Great. We have tips for using ISO and digital and a conclusion. So here we're talking mostly of photography and let's say I want a little bit more. So video is popular. Let's say we want a section on video. So I'll say, uh, please add a section on video. Video and ISO. Okay. And we'll just see. So it'll probably rewrite it. It'll update the outline. It'll put a section in and then it's exactly what we want. So again, just like, just like um, Vince was saying, you should be able to do just about anything. You shouldn't necessarily get the uh, content written, but it would, it would work. So I'll give a quick example. As I mentioned before, there's kind of a, there's a, a limit of how much content you can get out at one time, how much you could input or output. It's around 3000 words total based on the 4,000, what is it? 4,096 tokens, is it 4,096? Anyway, it's about 3000 words, give or take. So I'll say using ISO creatively. So I'll say write the section and we'll say for fun, this is always a good one. Um, use the tone and style of Yoda. I think there's only one Yoda, but we'll just be specific and say from Star Wars. And then I'm gonna hop back. While it's writing this, I'm gonna answer some questions. Okay. Let's get in here. And Jay Paul says, off topic about the supplements, is it, is Bacopa Moneri one of the active ingredients? Let's see. Not in this one, not in creativity or the clarity. This one has ashwagandha, ginseng, uh, pan axe ginseng. All right, I don't know how to say that. Um, I don't know how to say that. All right, and then agmatine sulfite and alpha GPC. It's hard to read those words. Okay. And then Al Mustafa says the link to downloading the prompt sheet is giving me this value seems to be invalid when I enter my G panel. Okay. So we're seeing, are you sure the opt-in works? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Sorry, everyone, if the opt-in is not working. Um, has anyone been able to successfully put it in? This was active up until, uh, and it was fine. It's not great for me to do troubleshooting here. Um, if someone, if you're, are you already on the list by chance? It should seamlessly add you, but uh, someone else is having trouble. And Marcus says, do you have the premium version? The answer is yes. And someone says, I tried to sign up for the course, but it doesn't take you anywhere. Okay, so let me check to see what I can do here really quick. Like I said, troubleshooting live is not great, but that is what we're 
<laughs> that's what we're arriving at here. Double check something really quick. Actually, I'll stop sharing here for a moment. And feel free to ask questions out there. Let's see what happens when I try to put it in. Is it doing anything? It worked for me. Okay, let me double check and then J Paul says the link in the email works, so it might be the link in the description of the video. All right, let's see what happens here. I'll check the link in the description. All right, I'm gonna put it in the chat again. I'm not sure, is that the one everyone tried to use right there? Hmm, it worked for me, <laughs> which is not always a good metric, but it does seem like it works. Did anyone get it to work? All right, and if you can't get it to work, just shoot me an email. Doug at Niche Site Project and say live stream link is your subject line. And then I'll make sure you get whatever you need to get. And people are saying that does not work. Niche Site Project.com slash AI resources. That doesn't work, huh? Hmm. All right, try that. Okay. <laughs> Chris Freeman says, ask G chat GPT to fix it. Okay, there's a strong chance if you're already on the email list, then you probably won't have it added. So, or you cannot be added again, you should probably go check your email because I sent out the link this morning. So if you're already on the list, then it probably, or if you're already a member inside the course, you can't join it again. So most of the stuff that I just showed you, you already have access to it within the course. And I sent you an email this morning. Okay, so I'll stop trying to troubleshoot here so that we can move on. Okay, so many people are getting some kind of error. This value seems to be invalid for your email. Okay, and are all the people that, getting, that are getting errors, are you already on my email list? All right, and then jumping back. Okay, so I asked ChatGPT to write one section using ISO creatively. So now we have, you know, a short section. Not great, so I'll say, can you make it more detailed and a little bit longer? Okay, so, and this is where these follow-up prompts lead you. You can, you know, you can get a lot just generally, but if it's not exactly what you're looking for, then you, you can ask for the revision. And this is one of the big differentiators between, you know, me trying to use ChatGPT uh, currently and then me trying to use Jasper in the past.
All right. So Adriana says that you're not on the email list, but you'll be watching them. I might fix it at some point. Okay. And Dan couldn't download and you're already on the email list. Let's see. This is a tough one to troubleshoot when it works for me. And virtually didn't change anything. Very strange, very strange. Let me uh, see if I actually got an email. Let's see if it landed in my spam folder. Nope. Always fun. Okay, yeah. If anyone, if anyone uh, seems to figure it out, let me know. Hopefully, we'll solve this pretty quickly. Okay. So I asked for more details, and I asked for just a longer section, and it's in the style of Yoda from Star Wars. So, using ISO creatively, you can control over your images you shall have. So that'll get a little tiring to read in the style of Yoda, but you can get the idea of what you can do. And all right. And Chris says my submission worked. So who knows? Thanks everyone for being patient, going through the troubleshooting. We lost a lot of people there. <laughs> but this is this is the kind of stuff that you can do. And with the cheat sheet that no one seems to, <laughs> one person seems to be able to get, you can get the prompts. So basically there's a prompt that you can use that will help you generate more prompts, right? And you essentially train one of the chatbots here to help you create prompts and you can give it a little bit of information. The way that it's set up in the cheat sheet is there's a sample and then there's a uh, description. And then what you would do for other prompts that you want to come up with, you just put in the title. You can add more details about it too. So if I wanted to create a chat bot that was an expert in nootropics, then I could provide some information about nootropics. I can enter in some of the ingredients and say, you know, you should be an expert on, you know, what, whatever these things are that Jason and I can't pronounce. Put a list of those, maybe put some brands, maybe put some details about people that use nootropics. And then you have a trained chatbot for the specific area that you needed to work. And, you know, in this case, I said it was a niche site owner about cameras, but you could say it's a podcaster and social media influencer that knows a lot about nootropics and go from there. Now further, right, I showed you how to write an about page and basically like a different sections and create a template uh, related to about pages. So I could say maybe I need like a privacy policy for my blog too. So I'll just ask, can you help with a privacy policy? And the thing is, you know, there's some legal ideas with a privacy policy or like a disclosure page, but a lot of, I mean, a lot of the tools online, they're just using a template anyway. So there's a strong chance you can end up with something that's pretty good. So it's putting together a privacy policy for a website. And it's a generic one where you just put in the website name, it's denoted by the brackets. So very straightforward 
and some of these details that would hold people up or was a problem to solve. You had to figure out where to get a privacy policy or what elements to include for an about page. And here, you just, you have it very easily. And you could ask for specific changes that apply to your site. Very straightforward. Let's say you have, I don't care about the rest of this. So let's say you want to set up social profiles too. So And I'll say, what about social profiles? Can you help write the profile description that I need for say like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram? LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. All right. Okay, and Chris says, the submission, thanks everyone for checking this out. Chris said, it took a while, the submission worked. Daniel says, you just got the email, maybe it's still a little bit slow. Test is on, what's up? And then uh, Fido Serve Group says, it's not working, but it might be that Kajabi is just slow. So hang tight. You may you may get the email momentarily. And in in fact, I just got my email to confirm the subscription. I do the double opt-in thing. So people can check that out. Here's the other thing. All right, so we're getting all this cool information. Here's the other thing. If you like the cheat sheet once for the love of God, once it shows up in your inbox, if you like it, share it with people that you think would like it. So your friends, maybe you have some peers, maybe there's a Facebook group, maybe there's a blogger that you like and you could share it with them. Spread the word, share the love, all that kind of stuff, right? It's free. <laughs> it's free. Okay, so here we go. What did, what did we ask it to do? Here are templates you could use for social profiles like LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Here's a LinkedIn profile template. Skills, the about, you got summary, experience, education, soft skills, you got recommendations, contact info, Instagram profile. So we have the username, we got the name and bio. So they're not really specific here. But you could probably, you know, ask for specific stuff when you're really honing it in. So like the bio. So let's let's get a little more specific. So I'll say I need more help for the Instagram bio. Um, all about, we'll say mirrorless photography. And I'll say, um, a Gen X. Let's see it'll, if it'll give it a little bit more info. All right. So same, same deal. They give us a tip for a username. They have the bio. They have a Gen X photographer with a passion for mirrorless cameras. Check out my latest work and tips for taking the perfect shot with a down arrow that points to... <laughs> the link. So pretty straightforward. And the thing is like, people probably know you can follow me on Instagram. I hardly post anything. I'm trying to stay out of that <laughs> whole app currently. So you can see that I don't know shit about Instagram, but here we have like something pretty usable or uh, let's say <laughs> actually LinkedIn too and everything else. Okay. All right. So Adriana says, it finally worked on mobile. Thank goodness. Helen says, it works fine now. So it was just a momentary glitch. Perfectly timed 
for the maximum number of people on the live stream. All right, so this is the some of the cool kind of stuff that you can do with ChatGPT. Today I shared some of the best stuff that I have found or come up with or, I mean, a lot of this is me watching videos, me messing around a little bit, and then taking ideas that I found applied to some other industry and then applying it to ours. So it's not like I came up with everything. I probably came up with 10% of what I showed you, something like that. But it's the 10% of like combining a couple ideas together. Maybe it's more than that. I'm not quite sure. I actually did some, did some work on this. But when you figure out how to do the prompt engineering, then it really opens things up. And then you realize writing the content is the least effective thing that you can do anyway with the tools. You can do much cooler stuff. Now, I got a jet for now. I think uh, Alex over at WP Eagle is going live here in a minute. Probably some people are going to be heading over there. I'll pop in for a second. I have some other things to do, but I didn't even show you. There's an idea that I have not yet tested, but I think it could be, again, another sort of game-changing idea. I might, I might not share it. I, actually, if, if it works, I probably won't share it immediately on YouTube. I'll probably put it within the AI resource course area there. And essentially i think it would it would make content that you get from chat gpt undetectable by the detection tools i don't know if that even matters the the detection tools are okay they're not perfect they can maybe give you some idea about the content that you're getting from a certain writer or agency or whatever but the idea that I have potentially eliminates a lot of the issues that you might find and you end up with better content with more personality and it could technically be written by ChatGPT. So, all right, that's it for today. If you want the cheat sheet, if you want the resources, there's a good chance <laughs> that it might work. If you go and follow the link in the description, you'll end up here on this page, I removed my image so as not to scare people off, but it is an awesome cheat sheet. It's about five pages long. It is extremely dense with useful stuff. And then if you want to go a little deeper, you'll also get access to this free resources. Essentially, it's a course. There's a link to the prompt engineering cheat sheet here. There's a bunch of detail about chat GPT. There's this amazing prompt for niche site owners that basically will create a chatbot that is a virtual assistant for you that is an expert in whatever your niche is. So that's it for today. Thanks again to Otis. They have a 40% off deal. It's only for selected domains. So check the link in the description and we'll catch y'all next week.